I shouldn't square the pi, right? 4 pi r squared divided by 4 divided by pi. then T is going to be 1.6597 times 10 to the third seconds. That's how many seconds it should take to cool down to 50 Celsius. So divide that by 3,600. 0.46 hours. Well, let's do it in minutes. Uh, divide this by 60 seconds is one minute. Uh, 27.6 minutes. And actually in the video I timed it and it came out. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Where is it here? So it doesn't, the radius is going to be bigger, radiate more, the room temperature is the same. So all of this stuff doesn't change, it stays the same. However, because the emissivity is different, it doesn't radiate, the, it tends to increase the time that it takes to radiate the way it's heat, right? So black oh, see here, 27.6 seconds. But the gray will radiate less, so it should take longer. So let's see what the calculations come out. It's minutes. So it's about four minutes longer. So then what happens? How does the emissivity change it? Well, I think there I'm using emissivity of 0.87 or whatever it is, 0.94. So emissivity, if it's different, it, uh, it adds another factor here, the other than one. There I'm using 0.87. So what happens? Does that make the time longer? Right? So then you put that over here, it goes down here. It makes the time longer. Right? So uh, it went up from uh, 18 to from 27 minutes to 31 minutes. So black object will cool down faster than the, the non-black object. So if you're drinking coffee and you want it to stay warm longer, what should you do? Put creamer in there, right? Black coffee will cool quicker than the cream coffee. But when you put creamer, what tends to happen? Cool down. The creamer is usually in the ice, right? So the creamer cools down the coffee by itself but then after that, which one cools down quicker? Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. In other words, when you put the creamer, it tends to cool the coffee already, right? So let's say this is the, radi the temperature versus time. Temperature versus time. This is black coffee. Right? This is black coffee. Then you have cream coffee, because the cream coffee starts out colder. Is there a time when they're going to crisscross? Oh, that's a good test question. I love that. Just came up with a good test question for the next test. I give you a black coffee emissivity one, cream coffee emissivity something else, starting out colder. And I say, how long does it take for their temperatures to crisscross? Mm -hmm. Emissivity of 0.85, let's say. Thank you, God, for inspirations like that, right? Yeah, of course, the black cools quicker, right? So if you're trying to drink it within this time limit, if you're going to drink it quick, then drink black. But if you're going to drink it over a long period and you want it to stay warm, drink it cream. Right? See, so mine is cream right now. It's still kind of warm. Okay. <clears throat> okay, then I timed it actually. So try that in your SI session. Try that problem. It is showing 47, 47 and a half Celsius. 47 and a half different points. So that means we are in the vicinity of our answer, right? 40, right now it's 47, 47. 
and our predicted time was 27, four minutes longer, right, that it should go down to 50. And now I am at the 26 minute, 40 sec uh, five seconds, so I'm reaching 27 minutes, and our predicted time was 27.6 minutes, so it's uh, almost 27 now, that's pointed at the ball. It is showing 47, 47 and a half Celsius, 47 and a half different points. So that means we are in the vicinity of our answer, right? 40, right now it's 47, 47.9, 48, depends on when so our... So we are done the calculation based on... The, so you see it's, we're about right. Celsius. So the time that it took, 27.22 minutes, so that one is actually pretty good, pretty reliable answer. Okay, okay now I am approaching the 41 minute mark, and uh, that means the gray ball has been cooling for about 31 minutes. So the time for the gray ball prediction was 31 minutes. It was four minutes longer than that. So right now it's 40 minutes, 53 seconds. So it's approaching 41 minutes. So let's look at the temperature of the gray ball right here. 51.1, 50 point, depending on where you- Because I started timing the gray ball so 50, 10 minutes later. I let it warm up. 51.9, you know? let's see if the other side. 50.7, right, mm. 51.4, <coughs> so we were hovering. So this is kind of the problems that I like too because you can actually solve and run it and see that the numbers are making sense. <clears throat> That'll be a nice extra credit you can do. Get coffee hot, creamed, then take a video like that to see how long it takes them for, the, for them to cool. So show when they crisscross, do the calculations, make a video and send it to me. Yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. Learning experience for the test plus little EC. Extra credit. Okay, now let's talk about conduction. I mean, yeah, the conduction is the other form of heat transfer. P is K A D T over D X. <clears throat> so now that's the conductivity. Conduction heat transfer in gases and liquids is due to the collision and diffusion of the molecules. On the other hand, heat transfer in solids is due to the combination of lattice vibrations of the molecules and the energy transport by three electrons. So according to this paragraph, conduction actually does happen in gases and liquids, whereas the other source said it's the primary form of heat transfer only in solids. But solids is only conduction, whereas gases and liquids can have uh, convection and conduction. So you do have conduction happening in gases and liquids due to the collision of molecules and the diffusion of the molecules through their random motion, but for solids it's lattice vibration. Uh, because solids in our strict lattice form, They're, this one vibrates, transfers its energy to that, transfers its energy to that. Whereas uh, gases, they diffuse and they transfer energy that way, you see. So to examine conduction heat transfer, it is necessary to relate the heat transfer to mechanical, thermal, or geometrical properties. Consider steady state heat transfer through the wall of an aorta with thickness delta x, where the wall inside the aorta is at a higher temperature compared with the outside. What was aorta? Something about a heart. The oh, heart, heart, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Uh, heat transfer Q is in the direction of X and perpendicular to the plane of temperature difference. So you have, let's 
see, so this is the temperature. You have a temperature gradient here, hotter temperature, and then a cooler temperature. And the heat transfer is always from hotter to cooler, okay? So the L is the thickness, and A is the surface area of the, the cross-sectional surface area. So in this equation, you see K is the conductivity. So if you have a surface like this, P is the amount of heat flowing per unit area. So it's equal to heat over time, which is watts. Right? And then the surface area, the surface area is this. It's the cross-sectional surface area across the flow of the heat. That's area A. DT is the temperature difference. T outside minus T inside. Right? So de temperature difference. And delta X is the thickness. Dx. Right? Which is, in this case, is L. So it says here, Q, heat transfer is a function of the higher and lower temperatures of the aorta wall and aorta geometry and properties and is given by A delta X over delta, delta T <coughs> over delta X, right, divided by delta X. So K A T H over T C divided by delta X. <coughs> they should be writing over divided by delta X. Um, Thermal conductivity K is watts per meter Kelvin. Okay, so what's the units of the K? It's going to be watts times meter over meter squared. This area comes down here. DT, now can DT be Kelvin or Celsius? Yeah, it does change in temperature. So it can be Celsius or Kelvin. You see? Then it's going to be watts per meter Celsius. <coughs> They're just skipping writing the, the, the division side on this website. They should be like, shh, you see? That's why you as a learner have to know this independent of websites, right? Uh, in the limiting case of dx goes to zero, the formula reduces to a Fourier's law of conduction, dt over dx. In other words, it becomes a derivative. So the limit, as you keep getting this thinner and thinner, this becomes a derivative equation, K A D T over dx. Whereas if it's bigger, it becomes a delta. You see? So all things are the same way. When it gets thinner and thinner, the deltas turn into dt's. So where dt dx is the temperature gradient and must be negative based on the second law of thermodynamics. A more useful quantity to, for work with is heat flux, the heat transfer per unit area. So it kind of acts as, so that's the next thing we're going to do on Monday <coughs> is, uh, what happens if I put two conductors in series? It's like me having two resistors in series, like a slab and a uh, another material, right? He, heat has to transfer, the same heat has to transfer to both of them. So this is called series. Now if I put them this way and this way, then it's parallel, right? So we're gonna learn how to add uh, heat in series and parallel. Conduction, convection, radiation. It's a pretty good website. And then on this other page, they gave us the table of the K of different materials. So the K of air. So what is K called? The conductivity, I think heat conductivity coefficient, conductivity heat conductivity. So what does that mean? The more, the bigger the K, the more heat can transfer through that material, right? The bigger the K, it's a better heat conductor. So should metals be good heat conductors? They're also good electrical conductors. Should they also be good heat conductors? Yeah. If you're hot, 
imagine you have a really hot coffee, put it in a metal mug, you're gonna burn your hands. Heat is gonna transfer very quickly and your hand is gonna warm quicker, you see? So metals are good electrical conductors and good heat conductors, okay? So uh, let's see, air, is it a good heat conductor? Well, 0.026. Watts per meter Celsius. So how do you interpret that number? Well, that means if you have one meter of air between you and another thing, surface, you know, so that's a one meter of air. In other words, you, one meter away from me, right? Uh, and you go like this and I go like this. If, I, if you're hotter than me, there's gonna be transfer of 0.026 watts of heat through the gas, right? for every one Celsius that you are greater than me, right? So if your temperature is 38 Celsius, you're running, you're running fever, and my temperature is 37 Celsius, right? So through one meter, there's gonna be 0.026 watts of heat transfer. Well, it's, that's not enough to warm my body, you know? Probably it's not gonna affect me too much. But that's how to interpret that number. For every one meter of distance between us, and for every one Celsius of difference between us, that's how much heat we transfer to each other. Let's see. Hydrogen gas, 0.182. So does that make sense? Hydrogen is better heat conductor than air? Because air is also oxygen and carbon, all the other stuff, nitrogen, right? The hydrogen is probably, when you heat it, it probably expands more and it can transfer its molecular motion quicker, do you see? So yeah, it makes sense that the conductivity of hydrogen is more than air. It's more easily expandable through diffusion, you know. Uh, liquid water, 0 0.594. 0.594. Oh, that's interesting. So if there's one meter of difference between us, and but there's water, there's heat transfer through water. So today we learned two things. The, the, absor the emissivity of water was like what, 0 0.9 something, 0 0.95, and then the, we learned the, the conductivity. Oh, I should change this to K. K of water, K of hydrogen. Engine oil, 0.145. Well, that's not good, because that means engine oil transfers heat a lot, fast, you know. But then we get to the metals. Mercury is 8.69. See, uh, mercury is more like metallic. Uh, so even though it's liquid, but uh, its, its conductivity is a lot larger than water. And then window, 0.78, window glass. Aluminum 204, there you have it. So you see why metals are so big, the conductivities. Good electrical conductors, good heat conductors. And copper 386. Okay. Yeah, so that makes sense. How about the K of some building? Now the other units for thermal conductivity is what? In America, British thermal units per hour, per Fahrenheit, per, what's R? Uh, per hour, per Fahrenheit, per Fahrenheit. No, per feet, per Fahrenheit. So that would be BTU per hour, per foot, per degrees Fahrenheit. So BTU per hour is like saying watts, right? BTU is British Thermal Units of Energy per hour. So that takes the place of watts. Feet takes the place of the meter. And per degree Fahrenheit takes the place of degree of Celsius. Let's see. So then uh, it's good to be able to convert between them. Uh, so let's see, if we, can we remember one of these? Uh, <coughs> six. 0.015. So 0.026 is 
is equal to 0 0.015. So what's the conversion between one to the other? Right? Say 43 is to 25. 386 is to 223. Because in some problems, we might want to work with that. So uh, we can just say, for every one BTU per hour feet Fahrenheit, divide that by this, you get 26 over 15, right? 26 over 15. 1.73. So this divided by, uh, it's going to be 1.73 1 watts per meter Celsius. Right? In other words, if you take this number and you multiply it by 1.73, you get that. Right? This by 1.73, you get that. Okay, cool. So now we're going to do more stuff uh, with that on Monday. Okay, nice. Okay, guys, jump into the next chapter, 2021. This is going to be a lot of material.